Welcome. This is Sunday Morning Worship. This is a ministry of three local Lutheran churches who want you to know that you are unconditionally loved by God. We know faith can often seem like a wrestling match. Life can be overwhelming, hope hard to find. Worship gives us a chance to pray, hear sacred stories, rest in love, and be turned outward as we prepare for the week ahead. So download a bulletin on one of the church websites and join us every Sunday at 10 a.m. here on MeTV. Take a deep breath as we begin worship. Good morning to you. Welcome to Western New York Church Unleashed. I'm Pastor Steve Bigner from St. Paul's Lutheran in Eggertsville. And I'm Pastor Jeremiah from Parkside Lutheran Church. Pastor Julius from Zion will be with us in the sermon in just a little bit. But Pastor Steve. What? We have no water today. Dry as a bone. No fire. No fire. But you know what we do have? What do we have? Your pastor. I'm surprised. You should know this. We've got the love of Jesus. Down and in my you heart. do too. Down in my and heart. we're grateful and glad that we get to celebrate that love that is not just for us, but for all. So let's remember that love as we turn to confession and forgiveness. In this season, we worship the Holy Trinity, one God who forgives all our sins, whose fire burns in our hearts and still lives today. Amen. Seeking reconciliation with God and neighbor, let us remember the gift of baptism and confess our sin together. God of mercy, we, we confess, confess that, that we have sinned against you, against one another. We, we forgot, forgot to love as we have been loved. loved. We, we are worried and distracted by many things. And we, we fail to love you above all else. Many times we store up treasures for ourselves and turn away from our neighbors in need. Forgive us for all that we've messed up, that we may live in the freedom of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. When we were laid low by sin and guilt, God made us alive together with Christ, forgiving us all our trespasses by taking our sins to the cross. So rejoice in this good news. You are brought back to the Father who created you, forgiven by the Savior who died for you, and poured out over again by the Holy Spirit, who walks with you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Crown him with many crowns, the Lamb upon his throne. Hark how the heavenly anthem drowns all music but its own. Awake my soul and sing of him who died for thee, and hail him as thy matchless king through all eternity. Crown him the virgin son, the lamb incarnate born arms those crimson trophies won which now his brow adorn fruit of the mystic rose yet of that rose the stem the root whence mercy ever flows the babe of Bethlehem him the Lord of love behold his hands and side rich wounds yet visible above in beauty glorified no angels in the sky can fully bear the sight but downward bend their burning at mysteries so bright. Crown him the Lord of life who triumphed o'er the grave and rose victorious in the strife for those he came to save. His glories now we sing who died and rose on high, who died eternal life to bring, and lives that death may die. 
Hey children, I am glad you're here today. Gather around the screen. Maybe you're watching with your parents or maybe you're, you know what? Maybe you're even outside. I'm outside right now. Guess what? I'm in the Adirondacks of New York at a summer church up here. And this church, they just planted new gardens out here. It's absolutely beautiful. I don't know if you can see them all, but there's these tiny little plants. They're very small right now, but they're gonna become bigger. See, look behind me. See those huge trees back there? Those are tall maple trees. And you know how they started? They started as a tiny little helicopter. Maybe you saw those, those things that fly down like this from the maple trees and they land on the ground and a little seed comes out of them. Maybe some dirt goes over them some water goes on from the rain, and then all of a sudden it's sunny, and boom, a maple tree pops out of the ground, and then it grows, and it grows, and it grows, and it grows, and it gets to be as big as some of these maple trees back here. Isn't that incredible? Maybe some of these flowers are gonna grow to be that size too, I don't know. Jesus in the gospel lesson that we're gonna hear read today talks about a mustard seed. Now that was the tiniest of all the seeds, maybe like just that little, little bit right there, just tiny little seed, you could barely see it, you hold out your hand, you, you know, tiny in your hand, maybe it was as small as some of these seeds for these plants. And guess what? That seed, that mustard plant would grow huge. It would actually get big and sort of out of control and, and the birds would nest in it and everything. And, and they, uh, they loved that plant because it reminded them, even though it was kind of a big weed, it reminded them, at least for Jesus, that their faith could grow like that. It could start super duper small, but then become something huge. And I bet for you and me, it's the same thing. Some days we might feel like, well, I'm, I'm just a kid or, or I'm, maybe I'm an adult, but I don't have the greatest of faith. Well, guess what? Jesus says the faith that's planted inside you and me is sometimes and might seem like it was planted real small, but it will grow into something huge. The more that we, we focus on it, the more we spend time in it in prayer and, and keep talking to Jesus about it, maybe it's gonna grow like faith, like the size of one of these huge maple trees out there. I think that's the promise of Jesus that he gives to us, that our faith will continue to grow. Even if it starts as small as a mustard seed, it's going to get huge because that's how God works. That's the kind of faith that God plants in our lives. Just like maybe these beautiful plants are going to grow and become even bigger. I bet our faith is going to become bigger and stronger too. So let's thank God for that. Dear God, thank you so much for planting faith in our life. Help us always to believe in you and help that faith to grow. And all God's people said, Amen. Have a great week, everybody. Lift up your hearts and hear the Holy Gospel as it is written in Mark, the third chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, The kingdom of God is as if someone would scatter seed on the ground and would sleep and rise night and day, and the seed would sprout and grow. He does not know how. The earth produces of itself first the stalk, then the head, then the full grain on the head. But when the grain is ripe, at once he goes in with a uh, sickle, because the harvest has come. He also said, with what can we compare the kingdom of God? Or what parable will we use for it? It is like a mustard seed, which when sown upon the ground is the smallest of all the seeds on earth. Yet when it is sown, it grows up and becomes the greatest of all shrubs and puts forth large branches so that the birds of the air can make nests in its shade. With many such parables he spoke the word to them, as they were able to hear it. He did not speak to them except in parables, but he explained everything in private to his disciples. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Well, let us remind ourselves what a parable in Scripture is. They are everyday experiences describing heavenly meanings. For example, Jesus says that the rule of God is like a woman who cleans and cleans her house 
until she finds that the one lost coin. So too God searches for we who are lost and brings us back home to God. Or the rule of God is like a father who greets his lost son upon his return home. So too God our parent greets us with open arms to welcome us home when we wander away from God even though God never wanders away from us. So today, <clears throat> Jesus shares with us two parables. Number one, the rule of God is like someone who scattered seed on the ground. Someone goes about their daily life fulfilling God's vocation for them, scattering seed and as the seed goes about its purpose, growing into a specific plant or vegetable, the sower does not know how this process all works, but she or he trusts that God is in control of the nourishment of the seed and its ultimate growth. And when the grain is ready, at once, the person does not lollygag, but rather gets right to the harvest. So the rule of God is like those who trust in God, paying attention to their God-given purpose in life, planting whatever seed is appropriate, and letting God, not us, letting God give the growth. The second parable, the rule of God is like a mustard seed. When it's sown in the ground, <clears throat> it becomes a great shrub. Now, as someone who asked Geneva to take care of shopping in the produce section of a supermarket, in preparation for this message, I went to that rich source of wisdom. Yes, friends, I speak of Wikipedia. And I turned to Wikipedia and learned that mustard seeds are the small round seeds of various mustard plants. The seeds are usually about one to two millimeters in diameter and may be colored from yellowish white to black. They are an important spice in many regional foods and may come from one of three different plants, black mustards, brown Indian mustards, or white mustard. It takes three to ten days for the seed to germinate. Mustard plants are a rich source of protein and oil. Now, out of the produce aisle and into the scripture. Old Testament writers use the mustard seed as a metaphor for the smallness of humanity in God's humongous universe. So the rule of God is like a little faith equals a lot of doing God's will. Doing God's will for our lives and for God's world. And this is important. Our most times small, meager efforts at planting the seed of faith in our daily lives is enough. St. Luke helps us to understand this as he tells the parable of the mustard seed in his gospel. Given what a mustard seed is, the question before us as we reflect on the quantity and depth of our faith, the question before us is, do we have enough? Lord, increase our faith, Jesus' followers exclaimed in Luke. 
Jesus, you want us to keep the Christian community accountable for their bringing scandal upon each other? For keeping the Christian community accountable for keeping focused on the will of God for their lives and for God's world? And bringing God's gracious forgiveness to those of us who repent for those sins and ask for God's forgiveness not only once, but all day long, if need be. What responsibilities, Lord? Increase our faith, the disciples say. So peeking at the parable in St. Luke, Jesus reassures his followers and us today that we who have little faith, Faith the size of a mustard seed. It is enough. It is enough, Matthew and Mark testify in their Gospels. It is enough to move mountains. It is enough to plant a tree in a body of water. So I invite us to recall the many unnoticed things that we do each week. It is enough. Showing up for work and doing a good job. It is enough. Listening when someone needs to talk. Getting the kids off to school. It is enough. Sitting with someone in the cafeteria who looks like they could use a friend. It is enough volunteering at a local homeless shelter, voting even if the field of candidates seems discouraging. It is enough balancing the books for your business or for a community group, writing a thank you note to someone who has done a kindness. It is enough cooking supper, praying for a neighbor who is having a hard time. None of these acts of kindness are any big deal, we say. And yet it is just these kinds of actions that occupy so much of our lives. And I suspect it wouldn't cross our minds that they are acts of faith. Jesus is saying in our parables that faith, even if it is tiny, the faith that you and I already have, that faith and trust in the Holy Spirit's call for us to follow her, that faith, trust, when placed in the hands of God, can move mountains, can replant trees into water, can hold one accountable with one another for our actions in relationships, can proclaim a word of forgiveness from God. Followers of Jesus, no matter the depth of our faith, it is enough. For the power of Almighty God stands ready to do great things when we place our faith as small as it might be into God's hands. What can we say? Asked Jesus. The rule of God is like a mustard seed. Surprise, surprise. Our faith, as small as it might be, is enough. Amen. Shall we gather at the
the river where bright angel feet have trod with its crystal tide forever flowing by the throne of God yes we'll gather at the river the beautiful the beautiful river gather with the saints at the river that flows by the throne of God on the margin of the river washing up its silver spray we will talk and worship ever all the happy golden day yes we'll gather at the river the beautiful the beautiful the saints at the river that flows by the throne of God. Ere we reach the shining river, lay we every burden down. Grace our spirits will deliver and provide a robe and a crown. Yes, we'll gather at the river the beautiful river gather with the saints at the river that flows by the throne of God soon we'll reach the shining river soon our pilgrimage will cease soon our happy hearts will quiver with the mellow of peace. Yes, we'll gather at the river, the beautiful, the beautiful river. Gather with the saints at the river that flows by the throne of God. Yes, we'll gather at the river, the beautiful, the beautiful river. Hey everybody, Nick here from Lutheran Youth. I just left a meeting with St. John's Home Board for Children. And if you don't know who or what St. John's Board is, they're a group of people, a board of people, that manage resources. And they distribute these resources to nonprofits and organizations that help support young people all throughout Western New York. So a big reason why Lutheran Youth WNY exists now and has existed for decades is because of the support of St. John's Home Board for Children. So as I was sitting in this meeting with them, I was pondering the gospel. You know, and, and the gospel this week is uh, the classic mustard seed story. You know, the, the whole thing that's like faith as big as a mustard seed can always grow into a vast mustard tree forest or whatever uh, mustard seeds grow into. And I'm thinking about the mustard seed story and I'm sitting in this room at St. John's board and I'm starting to see how similar these stories are. Because the story of St. John's board is that they are willing to plant seeds in places, take risks, and move resources into an area that needs it. And I think the coolest thing about St. John's Board is that one, they're willing, yes, to take that risk and move resources, but also they like to hear about what grows out of it. They're involved in this process of helping and supporting young people. And as the director of Lutheran Youth, I am a huge fan, obviously. So this week, let's try to be like St. John's Board. You know, where, where are the places in our lives and in our communities that need some attention? that need some resources, that need some care. Where can we plant seeds in our lives so then things can grow and change and become amazing and vast and awesome like a giant forest of mustard bushes or again, whatever they grow into. So 
My prayer for you all this week is that we can move attention and resources and energy into places that need care, and those places can grow into wonderful, magical, joyful mustard trees. Pastor Jeremiah, do you know what we do next in the service? Uh, say the creed. We say the creed. Why do we say the creed? Because it unites us around a faith that we have in Jesus Christ and the Father, our Creator, and the Holy Spirit. And so we invite you to join us as we unite our voices together. I believe, I believe in, in God, God, the Father Almighty, Almighty Creator, Creator of heaven and earth. And earth. I, I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Friends, let me invite you to join us in a time of prayer together. Creator God, faith in you is enough. And we give you thanks that you continue to have faith in us, to care for your creation. The beautiful creation that you've given to us, and hopefully many of us take a little bit more time as we transition into summer to enjoy and appreciate and find Sabbath in. So help us to care for that creation just as you have entrusted us to do. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Jesus, faith in you is enough. We thank you for having that faith in us to give us spiritual gifts to go into this world with a mission to change lives, to bless those who are in need, to show grace to those who've only seen hard times. Jesus, send us to those people and those places that you need us. Give us the courage to be in mission with and for you. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. And Holy Spirit, faith in you is enough. Especially in those times where we worry about so many people, like one of our viewers' sons, Tom. So many people that are dealing with illness or tragedy, recovering from friends that have completed suicide or those who are dealing with depression or just really down or struggling with addiction or battling cancer. Faith in you that you can heal them, that you can heal us as we share their concerns with you. Faith in you. And so we give these many people that we know in our hearts, our minds, our lives, the folks we know at our churches and in our families, we give them to you and ask for your healing for them now. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for being at the point of those needs. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. So it's into your hands, O Lord, that we commend all for whom we pray. Trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, who is indeed our Lord and taught all of us to pray together. Our, our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, come thy, thy will be done, done on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give, Give us this day our daily bread and, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. And ever. Amen. Friends, remember, if you have somebody graduating in your life at uh, maybe seniors in high school, maybe college, or maybe even kindergarten, feel free to send their pictures in this week, and then we're going to post them in next week's worship service. You can send them right to our email, Western New York Church Unleashed at Gmail. And I also forgot, Pastor Jeremiah, if you're looking for an outdoor service, Parkside is doing an outdoor service each Sunday that the weather is good. So if you don't want to be indoors and you want to worship outside, which also allows you to sing, uh, singing. join us here at Parkside each and every Sunday. All right, friends, and now a final blessing. And now as you go on your way, may the Lord go with you. May he go before you to show you the way, behind you to encourage you, beside you to be your friend, above you to watch over you, and within you to give you peace. Go today celebrating in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And all God's children said, Amen. Amen. Go in peace. Remember the poor. Serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God.